Growing up in New Jersey, the only experience I had with the ocean was the Jersey Shore. I would go to the beach, but I would never be underwater. I'd just be in the waves. So one day, I took it upon myself to try something different. And that was to go to the Turks and Caicos Islands with the School for Field Studies. Before I went here, I did not even look to see what the island was like. I did not even look to see what the ocean was like. I didn't even know what the island itself looked like. So, in my surprise, I read that the island was a desert and there's several endemic cactus species to these islands, contrary to what I had been thinking. Finally, the day was there, and we took off, and on the plane over, you could see amazing shimmering water and island designs. Finally, we landed in the main island called Providenciales. So Providenciales is where all the main tourism is. There's huge high-rise resorts. There is cruise ship ports, restaurants. It's, no, it's worth And you don't really get a feel for what the true islands are like. But I had the privilege of going to South Caicos. And on South Caicos, things are very different. It's a lot more remote than all the city-like atmosphere that's in Providenciales. Here's a map of South Caicos. And I was living around here. And all the yellow is the marine protected areas in the area. So here's the difference between the islands. You can see that South Caicos looks more wild. There's mangroves, seagrass, Providencialis. It's just a bare beach. When I first got there, we went to a place called Admiral's Aquarium. And in Admiral's Aquarium, I jumped in. And the electric blues of the underwater world widened my eyes. There, I saw these brightly colored fish called gr um, French grunts. And it was just amazing exploring the reef that day and going in different crevices and seeing which fish may be hiding in any of those crevices. The first time we saw a stingray, everyone was sea bathing. And we kind of jumped out of the water in fear of it. But later we realized that there's no reason to fear this creature. It swam peacefully by, and they're not out to impel you with their tails. Yes, the tails are venomous, but they're mostly peaceful. Most of they hang out underneath the sand, and they wouldn't bother you at all. And they're amazing to see. I'd also heard stories of something called an eagle ray. And they said the wingspan was nine feet. And they have different polka dot patterns on the back that are all different. Um, when I was in the area where one was, I was far away from the boat. And I was swimming back. And I soon had a visitor. Coming up from the depths was an eagle ray. came right at me. It was, must have been 10 feet across. And I jumped. I kind of swam a little bit back from it. And it, it turned right away from me in kind of like a flip back. And it swam off in the distance. And another time, I saw a school of them. I saw a school of 10 of them. So what I said before is that every spot pattern on these rays is completely different from the next, next ray. Sharks were another elusive species. We had been investigating the possibility of reef balls, and I had gotten separated from the group. I started swimming back to where they were, and the waves were huge, six feet. I was gulping salt water. I wasn't looking down very much. I finally got to the group, and they said, did you see the shark? And I said, I didn't. Apparently, in my struggle with the water, I didn't realize that a shark had swam right below me. So how many other times may I have been swimming in this water and not have seen a shark? 
The first time I really saw a shark was when the fin was protruding through the water, moving back and forth through the waves. I wasn't sure if I should jump in, but I did. And I swam right to where I last saw the fin. I, was, I didn't see it initially, and finally I came across it. It swam right by, and all those Jaws stories were simply untrue. This shark swam right by me, and it was so peaceful swimming right next to me. There's a lot of different habitats in these islands. Coral reefs are composed of coral polyps, and there's algae living in the tissues. 10% of the food that a coral gets is from the tentacles from the polyp, while the remaining 90% are from photosynthesis that the algae uh, do in their tissues. Another habitat is called seagrass. Seagrass is the only marine flowering plant, and there's entire fields of this underwater. Mangroves. Mangroves are trees and shrubs that can grow completely in salt water, and the roots stick out of the ground, and amongst the tangle of roots is a whole nursery for different fish species. When you first jump in, you don't see the role that all these different fish play. Gradually, as you know different common names, different scientific names, you realize that all these fish have play a different role on the reef. On the top here are groupers. Groupers are the top apex predator on the reef. Some of them are as big as me, the Goliath grouper, which is critically endangered. Others are a foot long, like the coney on the top right. They lie in ambush in the soft corals as they're too big to approach prey. Below me is the parrotfish. Here are two different species. Parrotfish play a crucial role on reefs. They graze on the algae that's on top of the coral. And without doing this, the algae levels could be completely out of balance. And in scraping the algae off the coral, they ingest the coral, and they process the coral out of them. And that becomes sand once it's processed out. So all the sand in the whole Caribbean was once formed by parrotfish and still is being formed by them. you begin to realize that you can't see the whole reef just in the day. You have to experience the reef at night. At night, you see tangs, which are bright blue. All of a sudden, they have white stripes. Lobsters scurry across the bottom. And when I had first jumped in, my light was not a sliver in the enveloping darkness. I saw a dark shape ahead of me and I began swimming towards it. I, th I was thinking shark in my mind, but what turned out was that it was a green sea turtle and a hawksbill sea turtle swimming right next to each other. It was the most amazing thing to see. I hadn't seen something like this in the daytime. On the bottom left is the leatherback sea turtle. They're the largest sea turtles in the Caribbean, and one of the last of their lineage. The numbers are slightly on the rise, but for the most part, they're still critically endangered. <coughs> There's a reef in Jamaica, and it's called Discovery Bay. And what happened in Discovery Bay was that algae smothered the entire reef because the beneficial fish in the area had been overfished. There was no more parrot fish to graze on the algae anymore. Another thing that happened was there was an entire seal species in this area that is now extinct. Before we could even understand the role that this seal may have played, it became extinct. We cannot have reefs that are completely smothered by algae 
and, and, and more extinctions. We need to have reefs full of life, where when you're on the reef, you see all these different parrot fish, and schools of fish swim by, and you see sharks and eagle rays and sea turtles. We need to have that happen. Nature can be resilient, given the chance. And as a generation, we know what the reefs can be like if we don't take action, and what they can be like if we do take action. The first scenario is what it will be like if we don't take action. And the second scenario is what it would be like if we did take action. I'm worried that not enough people are taking action, and that something incredible like this may not be able to continue on into the future. Currently, 80% of live coral in the Caribbean has declined. 98% of the former range of one particular species is completely gone. 20% of coral reefs around the world have been destroyed, but 80% still remain. One third of all mangroves have been destroyed, but two thirds remain. We need to create a zone of protection for all this habitat, and that's in the form of a marine protected area. So what a marine protected area is, is a, it's a section of ocean where certain restrictions take place. You may not be able to fish certain times a year, or there may be no activity allowed in what is known as a no-take zone. No-take zones have been shown to be the most effective way for ocean conservation. It's important to also conserve all the habitats, such as seagrass, mangroves, coral reefs. But just conserving one of those habitats doesn't protect the entire life cycle of the target species. The juveniles live amongst the roots, and they can also live amongst the seagrass, and adults live on the reef. So just protecting coral reefs themselves is not going to protect the entire species, because it won't protect the whole life cycle. Whatever major you are, it doesn't matter. We need everyone out here in the field learning in this way. When I learned about the ocean in this way, in the field, it, it developed an intense appreciation for it, and I developed a, a huge value for it. I, I wasn't going to have this just sitting in a class and reading a book and sitting at a desk. I encourage everyone to get out in the field and experience this. This even counted for my degree. We have to explore new places. You never know how it may affect you. I need you, we need you, to create more marine protected areas, discover new species, and develop a better understanding of these ecosystems. The oceans are essential for life. They maintain atmospheric and climatic balance, and CO2 levels would be significantly higher if we didn't have the oceans regulating the atmosphere. 70% of the oxygen we need is developed by the ocean. We often forget the connection we have to the sea. Life began in the sea, and it is an interesting biological fact that all of us in our veins have the same percentage of salt in our blood that exists in the ocean, and therefore we have salt in our blood, in our sweat, in our tears. We are tied to the ocean, and when we go back to the sea, whether it's to sail or watch it, we are going back from whence we came. Thank you.